Hello, I am Sinfogel. And Day is having a rerun, and I consider him one of the hardest legendary arenas. I have uploaded a sleep chain tutorial for this battle some months ago, but I wanted to make an update with current knowledge to help you defeat Entei given your best options. Entei isn't uh, terribly complicated, besides the fact that he deals lots of damage. Entei is Achilles heel is that he is very vulnerable to flinch. He starts the battle with this and flinch too, and every time he restores the status, he gains one stage of resistance to flinch, capping at least and flinch 9. Entei also raises permanent defensive shields through most of the battle, so you want to raise your critical heal rate to pierce right through them, or bring a brick break when given the chance. At the start of the battle, Entei can debilitate your tank by inflicting trap with fire spin or burn with flamethrower. On his second health bar, Entei raises his critical hit rate by one stage. When he reaches 50% health on this same health bar, Entei raises his critical hit rate by an additional two more stages, so all his moves will land critical hits. Critical hits bypass all defensive buffs and debuffs, so Vigilance is a very valuable passive skill to tank Entei. On his third health bar, Entei gains Piercing Gaze and Hostile Environment tech. He opens the round with Heat Wave, and it is guaranteed to inflict a party wide burn which can throw your strategy into disarray, that is, if you don't have an answer for status conditions. Finally, when Entei reaches his last 50% health, he summons a Sun to boost his fire type attacks and spams very strong physical moves. I consider Flinch the most consistent way of dealing with Entei. If you can prevent damage, you don't have to tank it. Even one flinch user on your team can make a dramatic difference in your performance. As for Sleep Chain, Entei has Listen Sleep 9, unlike most other legendary arenas. This actually makes it fairly easy to cheese him with a sleep, but it takes some practice to get the timing down. Lastly, even if Entei is difficult to tank, if you have a 1 5 Signature Blue or a tank with Vigilance, you can outlast him with the correct tools. I won't cover this method, but there is plenty of other showcases that opt for this approach, which you can reference if you would like. First, we will cover the flinch approach. There is an abundance of flinchers in Pokemon Masters, so I will go over the ones I consider the most practical. There are strikers who can flinch, and we will cover those soon enough, but you want a slot specifically dedicated to flinching. Azarola happens to be a useful and accessible free-to-play flincher. At 1.5 she has access to Astonish Aggravation 1, which raises her chances to flinch to 51% and she can disable Entei all on her own. 2.5 Plumeria has access to Smog Staggering 4, which makes her a very spammy flincher who can also poison Entei for additional damage. Winona has Air Slash, which has a 30% chance to flinch. While she's underwhelming as a unit, she can summon Rain and boost the power of your Water-type attacks, which Entei happens to be weak to. Bogler is a recent gacha and is very competent at flinching, and he can even paralyze Entei to enhance your chances of disabling him. There are other honorable mentions, like Nanu or Kukui, but they usually come with shortcomings that prevent them from realizing this role with consistency. Now, we need a source of damage. Many strikers can do very well in this battle alongside a flincher, but I recommend the strikers who can flinch themselves to help your chances. Crusher Wake is perhaps the best free-to-play striker you can use against Entei. As a self-sufficient striker, he can max his attack and critical heal rate by himself, and he also has Waterfall Aggravation 1 to give you an additional source of flinch. His sync also increases in power when the target flinches, so he deals decent damage for having relatively weak stats. Chris and Signus of Grimsley perform similar roles with Waterfall Aggravation 1, but Chris needs critical hit support. Signus of Grimsley performs better overall, and his trainer mode can even clear burn if the need arises. Steven is a great bet, because Metagross' main attacking move has a 30% chance of flinching. 
With tools like recuperation and natural remedy, he's certain to outlast Ente. Barrier Mystic get honorable mentions as strikers for being free to play. While they cannot flinch, they deal great damage thanks to their 3 5 grids with tools like Inertia and Super Duper Effective 5, respectively. Here is where you have some liberty in options. You can bring an additional flincher for your team, or you can bring a tank for a nice safety net. Because Entei inflicts trap and burn, it's a little difficult to find the capable tanks that can ignore these conditions. 1-5 Signals with Blue happens to be a fantastic tank because he has access to Natural Remedy and Quick Cure, which is circumvent, burn and trap at least once, besides all the other support he can bring to the table. 2-5 Kaylin is outright immune to burn and trap thanks to her passive skills. She can constantly regenerate health with Catalytic Cure too, but she will get overwhelmed if she doesn't have Vigilance as a lucky skill. Dawn can restore all her health and recover from burn thanks to her trainer move, and she also has innate Vigilance to ignore Entei's critical hits. In general, if you give your tank Vigilance, Flameproof or Escape Artist, they can tank Entei. If you cannot fit these conditions, then you are probably better off just using an additional flincher instead. So here's the team I arranged from the principles we talked throughout this video, and you may notice it's a pure flinching team. I have no defensive backbone, and uh, I think that if you're a new player and you don't have any strong 5-star defensive gachas, like a Signus with Blue specifically, you will find severe difficulties tanking Entei. Even if you have a 2-5 Skyla, you will need a lot of potion MP refreshes to keep up because Entei's crits are overwhelming. So stacking as much flinching as possible will give you a chance to defeat Entei before he's able to attack you. The goal for this team is depleting Entei's first two hell bars because we want the chance of inflicting bad poison on Entei in case that becomes necessary, and by that point Entei will be unable to refresh status conditions. So our best resources are going into the first team. We notice here uh, as an offensive aid for Crusher Wake for the most part, uh, because Rain Dance boosts the power water type attacks by 50%, and uh, Crusher Wake really appreciates the offensive boost uh, because uh, he even as a self-sufficient striker, he is not very strong with the type advantage. Waterfall is a weak move and he really appreciates all the offense he can possibly get. And uh, Acerola is the only one with a grid investment. She has a 1-5 grid for Astonish Aggravation 1 to increase your luck to give you more chances of flinching. And also Astonish Tiles because if she gets a lucky critical hit, uh, that chip damage may end up mattering. I am cheating a little bit because my Crusher Wake is 4 stars and he also has Critical Strike 2 as a lucky skill. And your Crusher Wake will more than likely be a lot weaker than mine's, but uh, you just have to make this up through more luck, unfortunately. Something you can do is send a debuff in team prior. You can send Nanu to Screech and tank Entei's defense, and this will really help Crusher Wake because he's a physically oriented striker. But uh, this is a risk that you have to measure because uh, this will lead slots uh, for the 4 star medal and uh, this will also advance Entei's sync countdown so he will get stronger and this team will have to eat more damage as a result. Okay, let's get this show rolling. I don't have any meaningful advice other than spam, air slash, astonish and waterfall uh, and it sucks, like I really wish I had something more substantial to say but you just have to get lucky because this uh, Battle is very unfriendly for free-to-play resources. Entei is incredibly di difficult to tank with his constant critical hits and uh, debuffs and uh, the status conditions, so the best way of tanking him honestly is just not seeing the damage altogether. So um, the first flinch is the one where you have the most leeway, you got a very ample window to try and buff uh, Crash Awake, and I want you to pay attention to this damage. 8,000 for a first sync is extremely solid, and the reason this happens is the conjunction of our setup. First, uh, we max uh, Wake is critical hit rate, so he has an 80% chance of bypassing Entei's uh, shields when he uses a sync move. Then we have uh, the rain dance boost from Winona, so that's an extra 50% multiplier for his sync. And as a tech unit, Crusher Wake is innate sync multiplier, it happens when the target is flinching. So when Entei is flinching, which will more than likely happen given our setup, he gets a massive boost in power when he sinks, and now we're dealing 1200, thanks to the previous sync buff that we had going. So by this point, Entei starts racking some flinch resistance, and you have 
to start spamming flinch moves because it's very hard to predict when he will break from this stance. So try to give a preference to Wake and Acerola. Acerola because she has the one bar spam and she gets the best chances of flinching and Wake because he is your best offense. Uh, here I did a mistake. I should have queued an Astonish and R-Slash before uh, forcing Entei into this transition, just for the chance of preventing this eruption from happening, but I didn't, so I, I ate uh, unnecessary damage, which uh, is really unfortunate, but it's um, it's something we just have to deal with. So here I tried to time it, time uh, Crash Awake is sync uh, with a flinch, but I didn't get the flinch, so you can notice that he had a severe drop in the in his uh, damage, so always try and time his sink with a flinch. And afterwards, uh, we're just waiting for the next sink. Uh, I think it is like 1200 damage. Let's check out that bad boy. Yeah, waiting for the sink right as I am flinching Ente. And uh, thanks to the prior sink stacks, uh, this just melts Ente. Even we don't have uh, the rain dance boost, uh, we don't run out of uh, move for that. But once you reach the tier hell bar, you can take a breather because uh, we still have three things left and we have the resources to manage this. But you still want to try and deal as much damage as possible with Wake. Uh, if you don't get lucky by deterring this hit wave from happening, uh, you probably won't reach uh, the sink in time. Which is unfortunate, but at least I get to show off that even though I didn't get a really chunky sink uh, from, on this phase, uh, you can still manage it if you know Entei's script. But yeah, all my nerves just fall in battle and it's time for the next team to take it over. Here is team number two and it's an admittedly bizarre structure, but the only goal for this team is inflicting bad poison. And honestly, I could just toss Koga in there, get lucky trying to proc a poison fang early. But I also tried to do some other utility. I brought Viola to inflict trap on Entei for some additional chip damage and uh, Bryson is my only regret here because he just did nothing other than removing uh, Entei's one attack buff or whatever it was. Uh, I could have brought Broly to cast Brick Break and, bra and get rid of Entei's shields, I could have brought something else for damage, I don't know. You can do more things with this team, try and get creative with it, but I, the only thing I did was just inflict bad poison and die, so nothing meaningful there. Tier time is a charm as they say, and uh, I hope you did your homework on the how it works uh, section of this tutorial because I want you to rationalize Entei's AI script for the tier phase. As we know, Entei opens uh, this phase with a heat wave that will inflict party wide burn, and if we can avoid it, that would be fantastic because we don't have to see the damage, we don't have to clear the status conditions, and here is the purpose of Roxanne. Why there are blocks AOE damage, and we pre can prevent that he will entirely, and it is just wonderful for this team. Now we have a lot of health saved up. Roxanne can also help Barry boost his special attack. He has issues with that if he doesn't have um, special attack boosts uh, from his 3 fight grid. And uh, Wickstrom is a vigilance tank. Even though he's weak to fire type attacks, he can block uh, Entei's sacred fires. He's a stronger fire type moves with Kingy Shield and ignore Entei's critical uh, hits. So we're just trying to block Entei is uh, more dangerous uh, actions, so true for uh, secondary effects or by directly using Kingy Shield. So. The reason I wanted to block Entei's attacks rather than flinching him is because I wanted the poison damage to stack, and the bad poison bumps up over time, so eventually it will start doing as much damage as Bubble Beam. So uh, something you need to pay attention to is that when you pass uh, Entei's 50% health on his tier health bar, the first thing he will do is Sacred Fire. So you have to time it in such a way that Aegis Slash can block it, Otherwise, he will just die immediately. <laughs> of course, it's some booster. He's weak to it. Uh, there is no hope that he can tank that move. So afterwards, Entei will alternate to an Iron Tail, and you can block the next Sacrifier with a Kingy Shield and rack up more poison damage. And if you get lucky, you can even get it to another sink with Barry, but that also depends on the tank you are using. Uh, Eggy Slash just so happens that he can survive just long enough for Barry to do some decent damage. And like the other teams, just falls to a strong fire impact 
And the last team, Anthony Barley has any health, so any strong striker can finish him off. I use a spaghetti or something from some minor free-to-play resources. I go the Clay, who is here for endure tanking, so even at the level 1 he will still function for this role. And uh, Starmi is just water type, so I just gave her some offensive boosts with Torchic and with Hydro Pump, but she can do some decent damage. Although if you have something better like Red and Olivia, please replace your strikers. I just use the best that I had available from uh, free to play resources. But yeah, Gentei just doesn't have any health left. And uh, after one sink and some cheap damage from poison and whatnot. And there he goes, and we won the encounter with only 12 sync pairs. So I just want you to pay attention to the fact that this is about managing resources. Depending on how you build your teams, you may have room to do more things or to do less things. So just strategize. That's the whole point of the game. Now, we will cover the sleep method. Currently in Pokemon Masters, there are five sleep users. Ramos, Agatha, Serena, Tech Bellsprout and Tech Bulbasaur. Serena automatically allows you to perform a sleep chain because she is fast and can sell both accuracy. The other four have to deal with inaccurate sleep moves. You can solve this by giving them the lucky skill Troublemaker 1 from Crunchy Cookies to guarantee their accuracy. Tech Bulbasaur with 3 passes innately knows Troublemaker 1. In the previous Entei tutorial, I said you need accuracy support alongside Troublemaker 1, but that information is false. After further testing, the community assesses Troublemaker 1 is enough to guarantee a Sleep Powder or Hypnosis connected their mark. Because Entei has Listen Sleep 9, we can afford room for accuracy support, so you don't need Troublemaker 1. Signa Surelesa, Leaf, Sabrina, and Lily all can buff accuracy. With two accuracy buffs, Slim Moves will always connect Entei. The problem with running accuracy support is that you may run into gauge issues, so you want a really fast striker or a sleeper to complement them. On a worst case scenario, you can lower Entei's evasion by a couple of stages with Professor Oak, who can lower any stat with Unfortuitous 9. Now, this is pretty much going to be a rehash of the Sleep Chain tutorial I uploaded the first time Entei was available, but this time we have more knowledge. Wow! <laughs> and the main difference is that uh, we don't have accuracy support for Ramos, and the reason is that now we know that Troublemaker 1 makes it nearly impossible, if not impossible, to miss sleep moves if the target doesn't have any evasion. And uh, personally, I, with doing all the Sleep Chains I've done, I have used Sleep Powder with Troublemaker 1 nearly a thousand times, and I have not missed once. So I am confident in saying this. But in theory, we have a slim move that can almost never miss, so we don't need accuracy support, and we can afford speed support instead, so that we can use more expensive lineups. In a slip chain, your concerns are a lot different from a standard encounter because you are not tanking damage. What you are doing is maintaining a pattern. So all your resources have to be invested towards that. Here I have a Skyla for a speed support and potion just in case I mess up the pattern. I think I did in this attempt, I don't even remember. But uh, um, she's just there for speed and make the party faster so we can upkeep our gauge. Then we have Barry who has a spammable one bar move with MGR4. Even if he didn't have a type of advantage against Entei, I would still recommend him for sleep chains because he's just super spammy and he's real, real fast. And Ramos is my only troublemaker one sleeper. He's somewhat slow. He's probably one of the worst sleepers, honestly. But uh, I like him, so I'm using him. It's the whole reason this strat can work. All right, let's get this zone. So, uh, the first thing you need to do is get your buffs going, and this I was going for a no damage run, I, I think I messed it up, but uh, I managed this differently than I should have. For example, I could have gone for X speed on Ramos and uh, gotten all my buffs uh, kicking before starting the slip chain, but because I wanted to prevent damage, uh, I managed this a little differently than I should have. Uh, to prevent damage, I am trying to time a sleep powder by the end of no hesitation is animation. But if you mess this up, don't worry, the pattern hasn't started yet and we're not focusing on this, okay? But uh, I, am, I am in this sense spamming sleep powder just to prevent damage. So the real pattern starts once we get rid of this first sink. Just waiting for things to happen. Uh, I know that I'm having some very succinct commentary at the moment, but. <laughs> 
the real pattern starts once uh, we can focus on actually keeping an entire sleep. So here's where I start my pattern with this sleep powder. So for a listen sleep nine enemy, it works differently from a listen sleep eight enemy. Uh, part two anti has listen sleep eight, so you can reference my self tutorial if you want to sleep chain that. But uh, in this case, we have a three action pattern. The pattern starts with a sleep powder, and then we use bubble and then ghost. So let's uh, see that happen. A sleep powder, bubble, and ghost. And you have to time your sleep powder. If you use it right away, you will hit Entei while he's still sleeping and it will fail and it will not work. So the reason this works is because we are timing the sleep powder so that it's uh, queued immediately when Entei wakes up. So that uh, we don't have that awkward issue of Entei being still asleep while we try to cast another sleep powder. So the timing for the sleep powder is uh, by the end of uh, the bubble animation, we want to wait for bubble damage numbers to go away and then use the sleep powder. Let's see a little bit more carefully because this is a critical part of the sleep chain, the timing of the sleep powder. Uh, that is the first timing you can use. You wait for these damage numbers and then wait for them to go away. Or you can use another timing with Barry. This is specific to him. You can wait for a Power Flux 5 pop up and then use sleep powder. Like you want to see this thing appear, wait for like a half a second and then use a sleep powder. Uh, which is more necessary when you're using a shorter attack animation uh, like a bubble. Or, but uh, in this, I am timing it uh, like uh, very casually. Like I'm not really using the powerful Flux 5 animation. I am waiting for the bubble damage numbers to disappear and then timing it. So if you mess this up, it's because uh, you are not doing it as precisely as precisely as you could by timing it exactly when Entei's move gets recued. It's difficult. That's why I don't recommend it. But uh, if you wait for bubble damage numbers to go away, then you will get the timing down. Now, here's the second part of the timing. Of course, we're going to advance our sync countdown and we want to get all those sync stacks going so we can aument our damage and get through this nerve bracking thing quicker. So, uh, when you have a sync app, what you need to do is sandwich it within uh, another couple actions. So, for example, here, uh, I want to sync with Barry, right? If I had Leaf, I could sync with her instead and do a sandwich with Barry's moves. But because I am uh, syncing with Barry, what I am doing is uh, having a couple ghosts in between his sync move so that I can continue the pattern. So when I want to sync, I sleep powder, I ghost, I sync with whoever I want, and then I ghost and sleep powder immediately. You don't have to time this sleep powder because there is something going on with uh, the uh, sync uh, requeuing uh, Entei and uh, you. The sleep powder use happens casually afterwards. You don't have to time that one, which is very fortunate. So in this instance, uh, and you just keep going with your damage. Uh, something you have to watch out for are Entei is uh, health transitions. You have to make sure that you can push him past uh, his uh, transition. So, and when this happens, you can just time the sleep powder immediately afterwards because during health transitions, Entei clears his status. So. Uh, uh, you can just put him to sleep uh, right away without having to time a sleep powder. Just as a nice safety net. I think in this uh, phase I did that. Yeah, for example here, uh, I know that this bubble will be strong enough to push him, so I don't really have to wait for the sleep powder. I could just queue it right away and snipe and take before uh, things get dicey. And just continue the pattern. And here we have a sync uh, uh, in this uh, part of the sleep chain. So ghost, sync, ghost, sleep powder. And just continue the normal chain. Regardless of what Enta is doing, a sleep powder, bubble, ghost, wait for bubble is damage numbers to go away, and then a sleep powder again, and the pattern continues. So it's just a pattern. You have to practice it. It's not easy, but like many things, you have to learn it. And once you do, it gets a lot easier the more you practice. So, yeah. Uh, that's about it for the sleep chain method. Uh, and I hope that regardless of the approach you choose to use Enta, I hope this video helps you. Thank you so much for your support and see you next time.